Hey everybody, welcome to J Stern Designs. Um, Happy New Year. This is the first official video of 2018. I got a little bit of a slow start because I had a problem with my website getting attacked by this bot virus thing and I had to take it down and I had to fix it and that took a lot of time. But I'm happy to report that I have a lovely website that is secure and safe to go to now. So um, I'm very happy about that and now I can get going with more of my regular schedule. I'll be doing a new video every week and what I want to do to start off the year with is a video I promised one of my students in my craftsy class, um, the perfect jeans for everybody, because she had asked a question how to make a jean pattern into a pants pattern. And I thought it would be much easier for me just to show you in a video. So that's what we're going to do today. I'm going to show you how to adapt your jeans pattern into a pant pattern. And what I mean by that is we're going to reattach the back yoke and then we're just going to do a little bit of checking on the inseams and the side seams at the end and then I'll just I'll also talk about the front pocket for a minute but um, you can see in front of me I have my jeans pattern um, I only traced it to the knee and the reason why I did that is because a pants pattern or a jeans pattern for that matter is um, symmetrical in terms of length front to back from the knee down. So your inseam and your side seams are the same length and you can design your tapered leg, your straight leg or a flared leg from that knee position. So I thought it'd be easier to work with on the video. Plus it's also very easy to then take the fitted top and make it any style you want after. So that's why I just had these short little um, pattern pieces, but I'm gonna get rid of the front for a second and we're going to look at the back. This is my yoke, my back yoke, this is my back leg. If I line up my um, center back seam going straight from the, the leg to the yoke and you can see what happens, you get this gap between the top of the leg and the bottom of the yoke. That's actually where the dart ends up if you were making, you know, if you were starting with a pant slipper to make jeans. and. It has the shaping similar to a pant, it's just it became a style line between the yoke and the back leg. So I just wanted to explain that because um, maybe it'll make a little more sense what we're going to do next. Because what we want to do now is we want to create um, a one piece back leg that goes all the way up to the waist. So we're going to incorporate this yoke right back into the leg. And to do that, what I want to do first is I want to mark my seam allowances because a lot of jean patterns have um, uh, they may have a larger seam allowances. My jeans patterns have a three quarter inch seam allowance between the yoke and the back leg because we do a, a faux flat felt seam there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna mark my three quarter inch um, seam allowance along the top of the leg. All right, so this is actually the, the edge minus the seam allowances. So we don't wanna include this when we put the yoke back on. Then on the back yoke, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to mark along the bottom edge the three um, quarters of an inch. My yoke has a very narrow, um, it's very narrow or not very deep at the side seam. It's only a half an inch. So you can see like here's seam allowance and then here's the half inch, it's only, it's very narrow here. So if you're working with your pattern, it may work out that your side seam is deeper. So don't worry about it if it doesn't look exactly like what I'm doing. Okay, so here's the seam allowance on the yoke. And I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut that off on this piece, just to get rid of all this extra paper. Now we wanna mark guidelines on the yoke and I'm just gonna make note of my side seam here. I have a half inch side seam. Um, it's common when you're drafting a pattern from scratch that you start working with your darts between, between three and a half and four and a half inches away from that side seam is where you start positioning your dart legs. I'm gonna measure four inches, one, two, three, four. And then I'm gonna go an extra half an inch approximating where a center of a dart would be. And I'm just gonna make a guideline there. And I'm just gonna draw a straight line up through my yoke like that. Okay, then I'm gonna measure two inches from there and I'm gonna draw a second guideline. 
And this is approximating where the darts are gonna end up on our pants, but we can always fine tune those later. The next step is I'm gonna put tape at the bottom edge of my yoke because what we wanna do is we want to flatten this yoke out and get it to fit along the straight edge of my jean leg. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a pivot at the bottom of the yoke. So I just wanna, I'm gonna slash two but not through the bottom edge and there's scotch tape there so it will hold it. I've created a pattern piece now that I can straighten out the bottom edge. Okay, so let's get the back leg. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna align it up with the center back, like this. Okay, so see how that's lined up? And I'm just gonna tape it to it. So now I'm taping the, the actual edge without seam allowances to the, butt, the edge of the yoke. So it's just taping it together. And then I'm gonna tape it to match up to my first slash. And then I'm gonna come over here and I'm going to line this one up as well. Now, if your side seam of your yoke does not match the side seam of your pants, that's not wrong or bad because um, a lot of times the bottom edge of a yoke could be a little bit smaller than the top edge of the pants, so you can ease it in to fit the small of your back. It looks like I've got two darts at the top there. All right, so now we've reattached the yoke to the top of the leg, and it looks like that. Typically, a dart on a back pant leg can be anywhere from, depending on your shape, it could be three and a half to five, five and a half inches, because what that's doing is it's taking in the extra fabric in the small of your back above your butt. We wanna make sure that our darts look straight down from the waist. So what I'm gonna do, and I've already done it here, I'm gonna show you what I did. I took a quilting ruler and I just measured straight up from this knee horizontal balance line is parallel to the floor. So I just extended it up here by lining up my ruler here and drawing it up here. Then I made one a little bit farther up. So. I want it to be about four inches from the top. So what I did was I drew a second line that was parallel to this line that was four inches from the top of my leg over here. And now I'm gonna draw my first dart. So I'm gonna connect that line with the middle of where the paper split when we so put the yoke back on. Okay, so there's one. And then we're going to do a second one and you wanna make sure that the second one is parallel to the first one. Second guideline for this, this is for the center of the dart that we're doing now. All right, so you can see that this is a little bit shorter than this, but that's okay because they end at the same spot. If you made these lines the same length, make the darts the same length, they would end a little bit crooked and then it would look crooked. So that's how you draw the centers of your darts. Now. Depending on your size that you're working with, you may need to spread them out a little bit more. Um, you might need to play with that. So this is just a general guide for the, I'm working with a size 14 um, jeans pattern that fits me. All right, so now these opened up a quarter inch each. But that's a teeny little dart. I think we need a little bit more shaping for the small of your back. So I wanna make two half inch darts, okay? And if you're really curvy, you will end up with bigger darts. My yoke wasn't very curvy to begin with. So if you're working with your jeans pattern and it's really curved, these are gonna be much bigger. But if you just end up with these two little quarter inch, that's like almost not even worth having. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually gonna extend my side seam a half an inch, like this. And I'm just gonna dash that back in. I just wanna give myself a little bit more shape. So I'm just putting that back. And then I'm gonna make two half inch darts. So I have the quarter that the paper split plus the extra quarter I gave myself. 
Okay, so then I can draw my two darts. Okay, so there's one dart. And then I'm going to do another... So I'm not taking anything away from the original measurement of the, the waist of the back yoke. I'm just making shape here um, for the small of my back. And I just think, you know, knowing that if you sew two quarter inch darts, those are tiny. So I just wanted to make a little bit more shape for a butt for these pants. And I extended it out here, okay. Now it may work out, you wanna do a, a muslin of this to try. It may work out that you need to take this in a little bit. Maybe you need to extend it over here at the center back a little bit, you know, split the difference. But for now, this will keep your measurement the same. All right, so you've got your two darts, your yoke is put back on, and I never touched the seam allowance on my top yoke, so my half inch seam allowance is still here. See how it bumps up funny? Because when it's split, it bumped up. I'm gonna draw that straight again. Okay, and then to find out what the shapes of my, the tops of my darts should be, the way you can do that very easily is, if you fold this, okay, and I always, put, I put my darts towards the side seam, so I'm putting my dart intake towards that side seam. I'm gonna fold them both right on the line close them. I'm going to take a, a curve and I'm just going to fill that in. So I'm going to kind of true it up. I'm going to draw it a little bit to smooth it out. And then while it's still folded, if I cut it, Watch what happens. I'm just gonna cut it into a smooth shape. Okay, so this is the top of my um, pants now. When I open it, you can see it made the top shape of my dart. You can see there's a little bit of a bump up there. All right, so that's how you can get the shape of your dart. All right, so now this is all ready to sew. To cut out and try. All right, so the reason why I traced my front leg is because I want to check the inseam. On my jeans pattern, my inseam on my back leg is shorter than the front a little bit from the crotch to the knee. And what that does is it pulls it up and it smooths the back leg a little bit. For pants, um, unless you're making really snug fitted pants, you don't want your inseams to be a different length. I'm gonna put them right sides together and I'll put the um, knees together first. And I'm gonna walk my, my inseam. So here we are, matched up. You can see I'm just gonna follow it along like this. Okay, and actually, all right, we're right here. I'm just gonna draw a, a line. My back crotch point is right there. So that, and my front crotch point is right there. So that means the inseam on my front leg is a half an inch longer. I don't want it to be longer. So what I'm gonna do, I have to shorten this by a half an inch. Um, the first thing I'm gonna do, um, this front crotch curve is um, designed to fit snugly with not much room. So it, it, it follows the contours of your body. I'm gonna lower that a quarter of an inch and then I'm just gonna redraw the curve, just the curve part. So this is gonna stay straight and I'm just gonna go like that. Okay, so I've, I've gotten rid of a quarter inch there. Notice this is at a right, almost a right angle. You wanna have that, that's good. Then to get rid of that other quarter inch, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slash across my I'm gonna draw a guideline across my leg. 
I'm going to put some scotch tape at the side seam. I don't want to change the side seam because that needs to stay the same as my back side seam. I didn't change it. And then I'm going to slash through here. Let me just make a quarter. I'm going to make a quarter inch guideline first. All right, so then I'm going to slash here. Make a pivot point on the side. And then I'm just going to I'm just going to bring down the top that quarter inch. Just that little bit. Okay, it's not going to be noticeable. It doesn't even really throw the grain off at such a small amount, but now my inseam is the same. All right, you can see that doesn't really even change the grain line that much. All right, so I've shortened it a quarter here and I've shortened it a quarter here. Anytime you play with the shape of your crotch, you just wanna make sure it still agrees to the back. I just wanna line them up with each other and you can see that that's a nice smooth transition still. Okay, it doesn't peek up or do anything funny here. So that's okay. So this is going to be gone. And now I have adjusted my inseam to match front to back. Um, the other thing I just want to point out to you here, and this could be another video, I'm not going to do it today, but remember you have this front pocket like this. Um, if you want to get rid of the front pocket shape, all you have to do is line up the pocket bag pattern pieces and match your notches and just draw straight across the top and you can finish the waist and the side seam here and you can just not do that kind of pocket. All right, so that's how to change your jean pattern into a pant pattern. If you have any questions or comments, you can post them below. Um, you can visit my blog at jstern designs and um, there aren't a lot of videos there. I just want to point out that I had to not put a lot of them back up because of the virus that my website got. So most of the information that I had links to from my blog are actually on my YouTube channel. So if you're looking for a certain technique, please comment below and I will find it for you. Um, or I will help you if it's been lost in the disaster. But anyway, I hope you guys have a great day and I will see you again next week.